Today, we're going to look at electromagnets, like this one. How to make one, and more importantly, how they arise from the magnetic field around a single electrical wire. To investigate electromagnets, what we're going to start off by doing is pushing this wire through a hole in the yellow piece of paper which is sitting on top of a piece of wood and of course I've drilled a hole through that piece of wood to make the whole process easier. The next thing we're going to do is connect this battery charger to the wire and the battery charger is going to be our source of current and what I've done is I've set it up so that Positive is down below, negative is up top, and so we're going to have current flowing in a positive sense from the bottom going up through the wire. And if we look at the right-hand rule, what that will sort of say is we will expect a magnetic field going around the wire like that when we pass a current through it. And that's what we're going to do. So I've set it up. So there's about 40 amps flowing up through this wire. And if we use this little magnetic field detector, you can see that the magnetic field goes right around the wire like that. But the experiment we really should do is use some of this stuff, iron filings, to look at the magnetic field around the wire, just like you probably did in high school. And this is kind of dirty, so I've got some gloves on. And if we put it around the wire, sort of like you might do with salt, what you can begin to see is the circular magnetic field. And if we shake it like that, you really see the field. That was a bit too much, but but there you go. You can see the field quite nicely. Now, the question might be, how do you gather up all these iron filings? Well, the wrong way to do it is with a magnet, because if you put a magnet on it, I'll guarantee you, you'll never get every last iron filing off there. The trick to do is to put a magnet in a plastic bag. So here's a magnet in a plastic bag, and yep, we can collect up a good number of those iron filings quite easily. It's not the strongest of magnets, but there we have most of them. And we could then put it on a piece of paper and put it back in the test tube. So that's all good and well, you say, but we haven't really made an electromagnet, although we have shown there's a magnetic field around a wire carrying a current. Well, if we put a second hole in our piece of wood and paper and shove the wire through that hole and shove it down even more, we'll now get what looks like half a coil of wire. And we're going to repeat the same experiment. If we use our little measuring device, we can see that it looks like there is a magnetic field that's sort of going around this loop of wire. And again, an even better way to visualize it is with some iron filings. I really should put these things in a salt shaker. There, look at that. You can really quite nicely see the shape of the magnetic field and the fact that it's sort of flowing out this end of the coil and going around and in the other end of the coil. And if you've ever seen the shape of a magnetic field around a bar magnet, that's exactly what the magnetic field looks like in a bar magnet. 
Now the problem with this field here is it's not very strong, but there's an easy way to strengthen it, and that is to put a piece of iron or steel in the middle of it. And now, if we look what's happening, you can see the field is emanating more from the ends of that piece of steel than it is just going through the loop of coil. Not only is the steel concentrating the magnetic field within it, but it's actually increasing the amount of flux. And again, we can sort of look and I can certainly feel how strongly this magnet detector is being attracted to the end of the bolt. And similarly, oh, it's so much so that it actually lifted up the bolt. Now I should point out this thing has a little magnet in it to do the magnetic field detection. So when it was lifting up the bolt, well, it was this magnet that was doing the lifting. Let's put that back in here and try and look at it again. Um, once again, you can certainly see the field is emanating from the ends of the bolt. So this bolt now has become quite a nice little magnet. Unfortunately, with a one loop of wire, we actually need quite a current to get any amount of magnetism that's useful at all. In fact, this is carrying about 100 amps right now, and it's already getting too hot, so I'm going to turn it off. So what we need is some way of getting 100 amps or more flowing around our core without having actually 100 amps of current flowing. And the way we do that is instead of using one loop, we use many loops, a few hundred, maybe 300. And in fact, that's how we make most electromagnets or things that use electromagnetism. And here is a typical coil. We've actually used this in our experiments before that has about 300 turns on it. And those turns come out on these wires over here. But we should actually try and make a electromagnet with a few hundred turns of wire on it that we've created ourselves just to prove that there's nothing magic with this core. So to make our own electromagnet, we're going to use this big concrete bolt as the core. And to make lives a bit easier for ourselves, we'll use this old toilet paper roll that I've cut in half and put it around the bolt like that. So we have a smooth surface to wind our coil on. And maybe we'll use some electrical tape to hold it all together. Well, we don't want it touching the metal there or we'll never get it off. There we go. Okay, so this is our core, and I have some old speaker wire that we'll use to wind the coil. And this is going to be a long, painful process as I wind this wire around the core like that. And um, through the magic of video, you're only going to see the end result in maybe 10 or 15 minutes or however long it takes me to do this. Okay, so here's the finished product. A gazillion turns, probably 50 or 100 turns of speaker wire around our core. Now you'll notice the speaker wire has actually two wires. And one is marked with a white stripe and the other is marked without a stripe. So what we're going to do is we'll just connect the white stripe from this end to the non-white stripe of the other end. And what that'll effectively do is give us twice as many turns in the loop. So now that I've done that, it's like we have one loop of wire with twice as many turns as we had before. So that's just a little trick. So now all we need to do is to add some current to this. 
maybe an amp or two and see if we get a nice magnet here. So to energize our coil, I have a six volt battery here made up of four 1.5 volt cells, just standard store batteries. And I'm gonna use a alligator clip to connect the one terminal to this wire and another alligator clip we'll use to connect the other terminal. But first, let's just take a look and see, is there any magnetism here? Clearly not. Well, if I attach this here, like that, look what happens. Well, you may not be able to see it too well, but there is a fair amount of magnetism. In fact, I can almost pick up that bolt. I can, and if I take the power away, it falls off. The current is stopped. There's no more magnetic force field pushing flux through our core, and the magnet is no longer a magnet. Now, just to see how effective this core is, let's remove it and try the experiment again without a steel core. Got the current going through and look, almost no effect. So that shows how effective this core is. And you might be wondering, well, why does putting a steel core in a coil somehow amplify the magnetic field? And that's really related to how permanent magnets work. And that's what we're gonna look at in the next video. But for now, we do have a very nice homemade electromagnet. And by the way, if you're doing experiments with things like that, um, there is a good way of testing approximately how strong it is. And that is you can use a bunch of small iron or steel items. I've used some little screws, but you could use paper clips or finishing nails and Again, no electric current applied, no magnetism. We'll add our electric current, and now we can pick up a bunch of screws. And the more screws we pick up, the stronger a field we have. And again, take the current away, and they fall down. And that's just like those great big magnetic crane type things they have in junkyards to pick up cars and others huge chunks of magnetic metal. So that's how we make electromagnets and how they work. Next video, what we'll do is look at how we make permanent magnets. In other words, how we get this piece of steel to stay magnetized when the current is gone. See you next time.